A warm welcome to you all. My name is Nick Burring and I am the Scout Leader of Holy Trinity Sea Scouts. I'd like to share with you a brief history of Thanet Scouts and tell you some of the stories and facts that I've found over the years. I hope you enjoy it. So let's go right back to the very very beginning. Our founder Robert Baden-Powell was an army officer who was fighting in South Africa in the Boer War. During this time he found himself in a small town called Mafekin which became surrounded by the enemy. He was greatly outnumbered and urgently needed reinforcements which didn't come. So he turned to the boys within the town for their help. He put them into small teams and gave them important tasks like running messages between the gun positions and providing urgent supplies to the men on the front lines. This worked so well that despite the overwhelming odds they held out for many months before finally help came. This battle became famous, the Siege of Mafekin, and Baden-Powell returned home to England a national hero. Once home, Baden-Powell who was so taken by how well the boys had worked together in Mafekin, thought that this concept must be explored further. So he set about organising an experimental camp on Brownsea Island in Dorset. In July 1907 he took a group of boys from many different backgrounds and taught them what we would now call core scouting skills, such as map reading, team games, pioneering, building shelters, tracking and many many other things. The camp was a huge success which led him to write a number of short books entitled Scouting for Boys. Many boys and girls read these books and started to form their own patrols and try some of these new exciting activities and so scouting was born. Now that's a brief outline of how scouting came about but how and when did it start in Thanet? So how did scouting come to Thanet? Well it's thanks to this man who happened to be a very good friend of our founder Baden Powell. He fought alongside him in South Africa in the Boer War and was even on the first camp at Brownsea Island. Let me introduce you to General Sir Charles Warren. This is the man who started the first scout troop in Thanet. First Ramsgate, founded in 1908. So which scout groups came next? Well from my research I found that 1st Margate St John's, 3rd Margate Holy Trinity, 10th Ramsgate 1st St Lawrence were all founded in 1909, followed shortly by 1st St Peter's 1st Broadstairs in 1910. All of the other scout groups were founded after this date. But as you can see on the right hand side are some of the earliest pictures I have of these scout groups. So how many other scout groups have there been? Well as you can see there have been 36 groups in Margate, Garlinge, Westgate and Birchington. 14 groups in St Peter's and Broadstairs and 18 groups in Ramsgate and Minster. Now there are only 15 groups still going in Thanet but some of these old groups that are no longer in existence were once attached to schools for example Woodford House, Dune House, Margate College, Stone House and hospitals like Princess Margaret, Royal Sea Bathing and the Royal School of Death. Some scout groups were even attached to children's homes within the area. At the beginning of World War One, the British government told Baden-Powell that the role of the Boy Scout movement should now be to train young men to become soldiers for the war. He refused this request but instead offered to fulfil any other requirement the government made upon it. So a list of duties was drafted. For example, some of these duties carried out by Thanet Scouts were the protecting of communication lines and railway bridges, messenger runners, 
first aid assistance, fire assistance, coastal watch looking out for enemy aircraft and shipping and many many more. In the bottom right hand side you'll see a painting of two boys. Now granted these are not from Thanet but these are two sea scouts from Dover and they are on the white cliffs looking out to sea over the English Channel for enemy aircraft and shipping. Now this famous painting is located in the White House which is at Gilwell Park, the headquarters of scouting in the United Kingdom. I mentioned that the British government presented Baden-Powell with a list of duties. This list was widely regarded as unrealistic, even impossible, by many. But by the end of the war, every role was fulfilled. In 1919, a huge victory parade took place in London with every section of the armed forces from the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth taking part. The only non-military organisation to also be included within this parade was the Scout Association for their incredible service. As part of that year of celebration a dreadnought battleship called HMS Ramillies toured the United Kingdom and came to anchor off Margate. The captain invited one scout per crew member to come on board as a thank you. This photo is of 3rd Margate Holy Trinity Scouts on board. Now two interesting facts about HMS Ramillies. First, Prince Philip served on board this same ship at the beginning of World War II. And second, one of the guns outside the Imperial War Museum in London also came off of this ship. In 2019, Holy Trinity Sea Scouts went to London 100 years later to try and recreate the same photo. However, as you can see, we have a little bit more health and safety to deal with these days, but we did the best we can. Now one point I'd like to make about this photo, circled in red, is a wolf cub. Now wolf cubs started in 1916, so this is the earliest image I have of a Thanet cub. World War II saw the call for Thanet scouts to serve their country once again. Those who were not evacuated helped with this process. And as early as 1938, First Westgate's headquarters, the Billabong, was used as a distribution point for gas masks for local people. Now I have a story that is of the Great Escape Scout style. So in 1939, Britain declared war on Germany. In the October, Third Westgate Scouts decided that they were not going to cancel their camp just because there was a war on and set sail for France. They had a very nice tour around Normandy looking at all the sights and then found themselves just ahead of the retreating forces heading for the French coast. Thankfully they got home safely and didn't get captured by the Germans. I'm not too sure that this camp would have been allowed to have gone ahead today. With the evacuation of Dunkirk, saw Thanet scouts quickly jump into action, providing much needed refreshments to the many injured and tired troops returning from those bombed beaches. Most of these soldiers were landed by boat on the end of Margate Pier and then marched along to Margate Railway Station where they boarded trains taking them to barracks in other parts of the country. My next story is a perfect example of duty to others. In 1940, scouts from 10th Margate volunteered at Margate Hospital to become porters, help entertain children and patients, and even helping in the operating theatres sterilising surgical equipment. All of this took place on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. 
an incredible achievement by the Scouts of 10th Margate. Now local Scouts continued to fulfil countless duties around the island of Thanet, such as helping farmers gathering crops, continuing with coastal watch looking out for enemy aircraft and shipping, assisting in collecting recycling materials, helping the air raid wardens, the fire service and ambulance service. But my next story comes from the cub section. Because of the evacuation, the numbers of cubs in Thanet was very low. So a single pack was formed and run at district level by a wonderful Arcala called Miss Nora Doughty. She took them on a camp to Broome Park near Maidstone where they were joined by the Royal Artillery who rather took a shine to them and then allowed them to climb all over their big artillery guns and even fire them. Now how amazing is that for a camp? Both wars saw Thanet Scouts pay the ultimate sacrifice not just at home but by serving their country in all sections of the armed forces. During World War II, 12th Ramsgate Chatham House School suffered the greatest loss of life. Every year on Armistice Day we remember all of those who have fallen. This year will mark 100 years from when this photo was taken at St George's Church in Ramsgate. As an organisation, Thanet Scouts for decades have come together to celebrate St George's Day. And as you can see from some of these photos that date back to the 1950s, the 1970s to only a few years ago, we have been parading through the streets of Thanet and looking very smart indeed. I thought I'd share a few interesting facts just to prove that our scouting isn't just confined to this little corner of the world. Uh, did you know in 1915 scouting in Malaysia started as a direct result of a scout from Ramsgate called Harold Cheeseman. 36th Margate was made up totally of Basque refugee children from the Spanish Civil War and Thanet District was once split in two, a Thanet North and a Thanet South. Thanet has achieved a great deal over its 113 year history to be very proud about. From the small acorn in 1908 we have grown into one of the biggest districts in Kent and our scouts have travelled the world and continue to help make it a better place. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you have any historical stories or photos or items I'd love to know all about them and see them. You can obtain my contact details via the ADC Scouts or District Commissioner. Thank you for watching.